Hi everyone, welcome to this uh, double header episode of Kuiper Labs. Um, in this, I'm just going to go through a quick bit of information. Um, firstly, we're going to be looking at naturally occurring acids and bases, and then we're going to look at the concept of acids as food additives. Okay, so we're going to have a quick look at some acids and some bases that occur naturally. Okay, so that is, we find them in nature as opposed to man-made or synthetic. Um, Okay, so we've got hydrochloric acid, HCl. Okay, so it occurs inside our stomach um, and it's used for um, digestion. We have acetic acid. Okay, um, so which is the component of vinegar, which is a naturally occurring substance that comes from um, oxidation of, um, of the, the sugars and, and, um, and the alcohol. Um, present inside things like grapes. We have citric acid. Um, so I'll just draw the structure here for you. So it looks like this. We've got three carbons in a chain. We've got an OH group of carbon number two. And attached to each of these carbon groups, we have what's called a carboxylic acid group, C-O-O-H. Okay? And then we have, we fill up the remaining spaces with hydrogens. Okay, so it's C6H8O7. Okay, and it, you need to be familiar with this structure to be able and be able to draw it. Okay, so it's present in a lot of um, citrus fruit. So it's what's responsible for the tartness of things like lemons and grapefruit um, and oranges. Okay, and then we also have, if I just use this this space a little bit, um, we also have another one, which you may not be familiar with its um, its chemical name, ascorbic acid, but it's more commonly known as vitamin C. Okay, now I'm going to draw the structure for you, um, but it's a little more complicated and you don't need to be able to know this one. Okay, so there's the structure of ascorbic acid, vitamin C. Okay, let's have a quick look at some naturally occurring bases. Okay, so... Um, so, looking at naturally occurring bases now. Okay, so the first one that we should be fairly familiar with by now is ammonia, NH3. Um, then what we've got is a family of compounds called amines, which are related or derivatives of, of ammonia. Okay, and so they're um, present inside lots of, say, um, plants. Um, we call them um, alkaloid compounds, um, alkaloids. Um, so they're responsible for a lot of the bitterness um, in things like coffee and chocolate and also lots of leaves and things like that, that um, uh, they're designed to taste bitter so that they're not as appealing for animals to eat them. Um, they are also um, can be quite useful as um, drugs and poisons um, in terms of pharmaceuticals, um, but yes, so, so they can be, that can be a bit of an issue. Okay. Uh, we've also got metallic oxides, so perhaps say like iron three oxide, uh, copper oxide. Okay, so that they are often the um, the types of things that um, are naturally occurring where we're extracting metals. Okay, and then we've also got carbonates. Okay, so carbonate minerals. So maybe we've got calcium carbonate. We've got sodium carbonate. Okay, they're all naturally occurring carbonate minerals. Okay, so that kind of wraps up our, uh, our section on naturally occurring acids and bases. Now we're going to think about this idea of acids as food additives. Okay, so um, now, so food additives. Okay, um, so we are thinking about, um, when we're thinking about uh, why acids might be added to food, there's two main reasons. The first one is for um, to improve the taste. Okay, that is to give things a tart flavour. Okay, um, so it's present in things like Coke, um, as well as other things like perhaps like tomato sauce and other things, to give it a certain kind of tartness which is, is um, makes it less bland. And then, um, the, the one that is probably more common is as a preservative. Okay, so killing bacteria, um, keeping the, improving the shelf life of um, substance. 
Okay, and any time that an acid is a food additive, any compound that's added to food needs what's called an E number. Okay, so it's an internationally agreed upon system um, for all food additives. So um, whether it's substances used to, to kill off bacteria like sulfites and things like that, or anything, um, yeah, anything that's designed to improve that, that maybe it's a, a colour or a flavour, uh, artificial or natural, okay, any of those sorts of substances that are added to food. Okay, so we have, um, so for example, acetic acid. Um, vinegar is in lots of different things. Um, you know, so in things like tomato sauce, for example, um, because it, it helps, it's actually part of the kind of cooking process and it improves its flavour, but it also helps to keep its shelf life. So it, we look for the code of E260. Um, ascorbic acid, um, vitamin C, is often added to things like bread, um, and it's E300. And then we've got citric acid and the citrates, so various kind of substances um, that, that uh, derived from citric acid. So we've got E330, um, 330, 331, and 332 are all in that kind of family of compounds. Okay, so um, you can all you, you can freely look up these E numbers of, of any food additives online if you're interested, um, even just to kind of decode what the packet looks like. Um, uh, yeah, but so if you see any of these numbers, that's um, an acid and it's often um, referred to as an acidity regulator. Okay, because it helps to control the pH. Yeah, it helps to control the pH um, and in doing so help to preserve the food. Alright, that, that's all for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.